Okay guys, Wing Chun trapping drills. So this is an important part of our Wing Chun training and it's all about building reflexes. It's all about knowing how to intercept, how to cover the area where you're exposed, hand and eye coordination. So there's a lot of benefits on working on these trapping drills. Having said that, too many people get caught up just working on trapping drills and not actually using those techniques into actual fighting drills, sparring and actual combat. So that link there is kind of broken for a lot of people in the Wing Chun community. So with this video, I would like to demonstrate how I use the Pak Da and the Jou Sao in my trapping drills and then how I translate that into fighting drills, which eventually you can use in sparring and fighting. So number one, you square off with your training partner and you just start off on a basic Wing Chun guard. Now a lot of people have done this one in their training in the past, but I just want to run through it quickly in case it's your first time, or maybe you've done it in the past, but you wanna see how it is that I actually work on this technique with my students. So number one, when you do the Pak Da, you want to slap the forearm, and as you do that, you're gonna go forward with your leading hand. And this one, you can actually go with a thrusting punch or a back fist. Your partner, their cue for using the guarding hand to protect the face is the moment they feel the slap, right? So the moment Brendan feels the slap, that is when he's using that guarding hand, bringing it across. Now, number one, this is a very important drill for both practitioners, the one that's attacking, the one that's defending. Now, let me explain why it's important for the person attacking. See, this one will teach you something as simple as not cocking the punch. Meaning, a lot of people try to do this technique and look fancy and they go, right? But the moment they slap, they bring the hand back. And it goes against Wing Chun principles and everything that we're all about, which is the center line theory of the shortest distance. So if my hand wants to hit the face, why would you ever want to bring it back? before you hit, makes no sense. So what you want to do is already start to put a bit of pressure on the other person's arm. So then all you do with the slap is just release that pressure and your hand goes immediately forward. More like that, instead of, right? Instead of like that. So that's why whenever you're punching, just thrust the punch, don't set up the punch. Set up the punch, set up the punch. We don't do that in Wing Chun. Now. Why is it important for the other person? Because it's building their confidence, learning sensitivity, learning how to work on their reflexes and not flinch, right? So if Brendan does the Pak Da on me and he's going forward, now I don't want to kind of like shy away from the technique. I want to make sure that when I feel the slap, I'm using my guarding hand and I'm moving my face out of the way because I want to be away from the line of attack from that punch. So then if I'm attacking, the other person will just sit and use the guarding hand. Okay, that one's the first one on how to use it in a trapping drill. Now, if I were to use it from, say, a sparring range where we're not connected, we're from a distance. Now, I can use the park down in many different ways. One, of course, is defensively. He's punching me, I sidestep, and then I go. He's punching, I sidestep, then I go. I'm offensive thinking of moving in and I can just go in, right? I can go in, boom, with a park da, back fist or whatnot. However, if I'm dealing with someone who I know they're pretty good, they've got good reflexes, one thing I like to do is distract them. So if he's there, I want to distract them with that low inside kick, boom, and then I go forward with a park da. So from here, you just go in, with that low kick towards the inner thigh. But as you do that, you're already protecting your face. So as you protect, then that's when you go with that Pak Da. In a street fight, that kick can easily be a kick to the kneecap, kick to the groin, and then you follow up with a Pak Da. The second drill, the running hand. Now when you're working on it, you can do it from Chi Sao, or you can do it from trapping hand position. If I do it from here, I can just make sure that when I run the hand, I'm protecting my face here, okay? I don't want to 
have that arm without me putting the pressure on because the moment I do that, that hand would come straight towards my face. So as I disconnect, I'm switching and then I'm running. As I disconnect, I'm switching, then I'm running. So when I'm doing the running hand, this one is covering and pressing, and then your training partner can just easily turn into a Quan Tso. So then from here, it turns into that. From here, boom. You just go forward, boom. You go forward, running hand, and make sure that you maintain the pressure on the lower arm here, because you don't want that arm coming back at you. Now once again, how can I use a running hand from, say, fighting range or sparring? The running hand is a really good movement to use in your chisel game, but when you're disconnected, one very important and effective way of you using the running hand is actually as a counter to a counter attack. So let's keep it simple. Let's say I'm coming in with a punch and Brendan is just covering and hitting me back. So I'm punching, you go boom, and he's hitting me back. I'm punching, he splits, and he hits back. One, two. One, two, right? Now, if I see that happening, and he caught me a bit off guard, then I can easily redirect the arm and run the hand. Meaning, I go one, I go two, boom, here. Right, so I'm attacking, I know he's split, boom. Right, so I go one, he's covered, but here, I'm running with this one. So then, as I go, he cut, boom. I just redirect and run the hand. Now you may say, why would I want to run? Number one, fighting happens very fast. If your instincts kick in and you just ran, well then you have to learn to follow up. So then if I went one, two, here, boom, and then you just follow up with this one. Because the moment I went one, let's go, one, two, ran, here. Once he's covering there, I can just pull it and then follow up on the opposite side. So that is how I would use these two fundamental Wing Chun techniques from trapping drills, trapping range, into sparring, into fighting. Okay, Park Da and the Jou Sao. So that's it for today, guys. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.